Throughout history, missile defense has been a constant tug of war between offense and defense. It's a reminder that in the ever-evolving landscape of warfare, adaptability is key. Today, we will explore the history and evolution of missiles, get a sense of what the future of air warfare will look like, and find out what new programs are underway. History of Air-to-Air -air Missile Remember that iconic line from Top Gun? Good tone. I've got a good tone. I've got tone. I've got tone. Fiery. Well, it's more than just movie magic. It's a nod to these incredible advancements in air combat weaponry, specifically the air-to-air -air missile. These babies have sparked debates, inspired awe, and changed the game of modern air warfare. Let's take a look at the fascinating history of these high-flying marvels. Let's start with the OG of heat seekers, the Sidewinder missile. Post-World War II at the Naval Ordnance Test Station in California, Dr. William B. McLean is on a mission to create a missile that's simple, reliable, and affordable. Enter the Sidewinder, armed with an infrared-sensitive explosive fuse that hones in on the heat of enemy aircraft exhausts. But hold on, the journey to get there wasn't all smooth sailing. Early versions faced skepticism and setbacks, but McLean and his team persisted, refining the Sidewinder until it became a force to be reckoned with. Fast forward to the 50s, and the Sidewinder faces off against the Air Force's Falcon missile in a head-to-head -head showdown. Spoiler alert, the Falcon flops while the Sidewinder shines, scoring impressive kills and earning its stripes in combat. But hey, the Sidewinder wasn't without its quirks. Early versions could only lock onto hot targets from behind, and they weren't the most maneuverable. Still, constant upgrades and iterations from the AIM-9B to the game-changing AIM-9X kept it relevant and deadly. Now, let's talk radar-guided missiles. Back in the day, radar homing tech was all the rage, but early attempts like the AIM-4 Falcon and AIM-7 Sparrow fell short in combat. The Falcon's seeker cooling issues and the Sparrow's limitations against nimble foes left a lot to be desired. But fear not, improvements were on the horizon. With the AIM-120 and AMRAAM, air-to-air combat is forever changed. Thanks to its active radar seeker and fire and forget capabilities, this bad boy packs a punch. Plus, it's constantly evolving from the AIM-120A to the latest AIM-120D, boasting longer ranges and enhanced lethality. But hey, quality comes at a cost. The AIM-120 doesn't come cheap with a price tag that'll make your wallet wince. Still, with a track record of success in conflicts worldwide, it's worth every penny. And the innovation doesn't stop there. With new projects like the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile on the horizon, the future of air-to-air -air warfare is looking brighter than ever. The US Inventory Alright, let's take a look at the top dogs in the US arsenal, specifically how they measure up to each other. First up, we've got the AIM-9 Sidewinder, a classic in the air warfare scene. This bad boy has been around since 1956, seeing action for the first time in 1958. Talk about a seasoned veteran, right? Back in the day, the Sidewinder was just a lightweight, short-range missile primarily relying on infrared homing. Just think, it used to work best when tailing an enemy aircraft, honing in on the heat signature of their engine like a heat-seeking missile. Well, because that's exactly what it was. But hold on to your helmets, folks, because the Sidewinder got a major facelift in the late 70s with the AIM-9L upgrade. Suddenly, it could strike from any angle, boosting its hit rate from a meager 10% during Vietnam to 80% in the Falklands War. Then, in the early 2000s, along came the AIM-9X, equipped with fancy new features like an imaging infrared seeker. Flares? No problem for this cutting-edge missiles. But wait, there's more. With compatibility for helmet-mounted sights, off-bore sight firing, and agility that'll make your head spin, the Sidewinder keeps getting better with age, despite nearing its 70th birthday. Now let's talk of range. The official Air Force claim? More than 10 miles. Not too shabby, but if you're looking for long-range precision, there is the AMRAAM. The AMRAAM has been the go-to choice for longer distances since the early 90s, boasting upgrades and impressive features. We're talking a reach of up to 100 kilometers for some versions, with the latest D version stretching that to an estimated 160 kilometers. That's some serious firepower. And boy, did the world take notice. If you aren't rocking French, Russian, or Chinese gear, chances are you're packing AMRAMs in your arsenal. It became the gold standard for major air forces around the globe. Now, you might be wondering why the US didn't immediately roll out a replacement for the AMRAM to maintain its dominance. Well, they did try with a next-generation missile program in the 2010s, aiming for a more advanced missile that could do it all. 
but alas, it got the axe in the 2013 budget request. In hindsight, it might seem like a missed opportunity, but back then priorities were different. With counterinsurgency taking center stage and other global tensions simmering below the surface, upgrading the trusty Amram seemed like the most practical move. But here's the thing, as time marches on, even the mightiest of missiles can start showing their age. Eventually, you might find yourself stuck in a missile of thesis situation where so many upgrades have been made that you're better off starting from scratch. And while the Amram was once the undisputed champ, new contenders have emerged over time, keeping the competition fierce. The New Programs Now, wrapping your head around all the details of American missile programs can feel like trying to untangle a knot in the dark. With so many programs, varying from classified to still in the works concepts, it's no wonder things get a bit fuzzy. So let's break it down into three main categories, shall we? First up, we've got the need for a direct replacement for the AIM-120 AMRAAM, but with a longer range and better effectiveness. Think of it as upgrading the trusty old AMRAAM to tackle modern threats head-on. Then, there's the desire for a missile that can reach even further into the sky, sacrificing a bit of size for more range. We're talking about a big, long-range beast that can cover serious ground. And lastly, there's a push for a smaller, more nimble missile, packing AMRAAM like punch in a smaller package. Picture it as a mini AMRAAM, perfect for fitting more firepower onto aircraft and drones without bulking them up too much. Now, why all the fuss about range? Well, it's all about giving American fighters the edge in combat. With stealth features, top-notch sensors, and data links, pilots should ideally spot their opponents before they even know what hit them. But that advantage goes out the window if they have to get too close for comfort to launch their missiles. Enter the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, or JATM for short. This bad boy is the closest thing we've got to a sure bet. It's been tested, production is ramping up, and it's been the talk of the town for years. With the Air Force and Navy teaming up on its development, it's a joint effort to keep American fighters ahead of the curve. While JATM is a game changer, it's not the only player in town. Companies like Boeing and Raytheon are cooking up their own long-range missiles, aiming to outdo even the mighty JATM in terms of range. These missiles might not fit snugly inside 5th gen fighters like the F-35, but they'll find a cozy spot on the wings of beefier 4th gen birds like the F-15EX. But what about when smaller is better? That's where concepts like Raytheon's Peregrine and Lockheed Martin's CUDA come into play. These pint-sized powerhouses promise AMRAAM-like performance in a package that won't weigh down the aircraft. Perfect for drones, small fighters, or taking out pesky targets without burning through your entire missile stash. So, whether it's beefing up range, slimming down size, or finding the perfect balance in between, American missile development is firing on all cylinders. And with the future of aerial combat evolving faster than ever, having the right missile in your arsenal could mean the difference between victory and defeat. Exciting times ahead, folks! So, wrapping things up, it's crucial to remember that innovation doesn't just happen in a vacuum. It's like a dance between technology, how we use it, and our determination to push boundaries. When we talk about winning in future air battles, it's not just about having the latest gadgets. It's about pilots embracing new tech and our military's readiness to adapt to the changing face of warfare.